Hey guys, um, what we're gonna look at today is really wrapping up our dystopian book clubs. We have um, Wednesday and Thursday, and then when we're done, when we come back from break, we're gonna be starting on The Outsiders. Um, so in order to wrap this up, I want us to think about connections and what dystopian fiction reveals, which really tells us why dystopian fiction is so popular and why we still read it. So if you look um, on the presentation, the image I have at the beginning is, it's a trailer for Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. And it's about a world where books are illegal, which some might be like, well, good, then I don't have to read. But actually the books contain all the knowledge. So if they don't have books, the people don't know anything. Um, another example of a dystopian novel that's a classic is 1984 by George Orwell. And he wrote that right after the Holocaust and World War II. Um, it was a time where hatred just killed millions of people. And Orwell looked around the world and it scared him to see people just blindly following along um, and doing things because a leader told them to. So um, if you're thinking about it, it makes you wonder why these books are still so popular today. Here's a connection. Um, just like those other two examples, dystopian authors are often inspired by real life. Sabah Tahir wrote An Ember in the Ashes, and when she was working as an editor at the Washington Post, she edited a story about um, women in India whose husbands, sons, and brothers were disappeared by the state police, and no one ever told them where they went or what they were charged for. They just never saw them again. So in the beginning of An Ember in the Ashes, the protagonist's brother gets taken, and no one tells her why, and she ends up breaking into a prison to try to get him back. The same for the Tribe series, which no one read this year, but I did read it with a group before. Um, the author, Amberlynn Kwaimalina, is an Aboriginal from Australia. So she is um, a native of Australia. And she wrote the story because of an actual law it's based on Western Australia Natives, the Citizenship Rights Act of 1944. Um, that Aboriginal people's citizenship, if they didn't apply for it, they weren't allowed to get married. And if they did apply for citizenship, they wouldn't, they weren't allowed to even talk to or associate with any of their family members who weren't citizens. So another way to study how dystopian stories connect with the world is to look for connections to social issues, current events, or historical events. And those connections can reveal what the story is really about. So some social issues that might turn up in your dystopian books are racism, sexism, bullying, division between groups, so classism, um, or many of the popular historical events that have been recreated in dystopian fiction would be like the Holocaust, Salem witch trials, slavery, dropping of the A-bomb. So when we come across these things, we need to consider um, does this reveal anything about the world we live in or how people tend to act, act? We must identify parts that feel similar to real life and consider what those similarities mean. <clears throat> so, for example, we read Harrison Bergeron. And um, if we think, what does this reveal about the world we live in? It could reveal that as a society, we're obsessed with things being fair. When reading The Lottery... Um, we might think this reveals that sometimes we blindly follow tradition, even if we don't know where it came from or why we're doing it. And in Pony is, it tells us how much people are willing to do to fit into a group. So on classroom, you're going to have uh, some discussion questions. So I want you to think about what does your text reveal about the world we live in? What does your text reveal about how people tend to act? I feel like there's a lot of selfishness in dystopian novels. And then what connections to social issues, current events, or historical events do you see in your text? If you're not seeing any of these things, or if you're not sure how to answer this, um, just write some of the things that you've noticed as we're wrapping this up. Our last assignment on Thursday is just going to be a flip grid, um, doing a book talk, trying to sell your book to people. So I'll post that on Thursday. But good luck with this. And if you have any questions, remember, feel free to send an email, send a chat. Good luck.